Hello and welcome. You're watching Business Today TV. I'm Sakshi Batra, and this is a special edition where we're going to be focusing on Go First and the proceedings that have happened today. The order that has come in from the NCLT. It's a big relief for Go First as the NCLT has admitted the insolvency plea for voluntary insolvency from the airline and has also initiated CIRP proceedings uh, for the airline as well. In fact, it has also granted Go First a protection under moratorium from recovery by the lessers and lenders. Now, what does this really mean for the airline? We'll get an expert understanding. Joining me on this edition with me is uh, Mr. Sanat Kaul, the chairman at International Foundation for Aviation Aerospace and Drones. Welcome, sir, and thank you so much for taking the time out for this discussion. Now, you've been tracking this space for far long, and it'll be best to understand from you what does the order from the NCLT really mean for Go First as an airline is it a big relief yes thank you very much uh, yeah uh, uh, go air have voluntarily gone to nclt and to that extent uh, uh, they are uh, you know they are using the nclt uh, way of getting uh, back hopefully into the airline mode once again to do flying mode um, it is very unfortunate that uh, they had to take this step, but I can understand that with so many, uh, say about 80% of the aircraft or probably more are down because of the Pratt & Whitney engines, they had to take this step. Uh, what has happened between them and Pratt & Whitney is yet another issue. Uh, and uh, it's very unfortunate that in India, a large number of other airlines are also down, but their number of... Uh, Aircraft which had Pratt and Whitney engines was not so high as a percentage Got as that. in gold. Absolutely. So yeah. Absolutely. Mr. Call, I will come back to you to get a deeper understanding of what the order and the details of the order mean. Meanwhile, I'm also joined by my colleague Anisha Math, who joins in, who's been tracking the court proceedings, the details that have come in from there. We've also got exclusive uh, reaction, the first reaction from the CEO of Go First as well. Anisha, take it away. What are the key details that you've got from the order? Well, Sakshi, the NCLT has admitted the IRP proceed the uh, proceedings under the IBC. That remember, as uh, Mr. Call just said, the uh, airline had gone themselves to the NCLT asking for the insolvency proceedings to be initiated. They have uh, allowed this uh, uh, IBC proceedings to start. Mr. Abhilash Lal, who ha uh, has been appointed as the interim resolution professional, the co uh, NCLT has also passed certain directions. Now, first of all, of course, is the moratorium against alienation of any assets, etc by the lenders or anybody else the court has uh, the uh, tribunal has also said that the uh, officials of the airline will ensure that co the corporate applicant uh, will give all necessary support to the irp for the proceedings to go on smoothly they have to deposit 5 crore rupees with the resolution professional uh, for the initial cost but what is also um, important for the airline and for its employees is that the uh, uh, NCLT has said that uh, it must be kept as a going concern that no staff should be laid off. Staff welfare should be kept uh, into account when, uh, and, uh, as the proceedings are going on. So now uh, we'll have to wait and see how this proceeding goes on further. Uh, Mr. Abhilash Rao, of course, has been appointed as the IRP, as the NCLT has admitted the insolvency for the petition, imposed a moratorium on the go first assets, and has inched, uh, asked. The, How long uh, is the moratorium for the Anisha? How long interest? is the moratorium for for the airline? Well, Sakshi, to answer that question, we'll have to wait for the detailed order of the court. I am uh, uh, talking about what the what was said in open court by the NCLT presiding officer. What Got they it. have said is that the suspended management will extend all support. No employees are to be laid off. Uh, arbitration proceedings, and this is also important, that the arbitration proceedings that have, that had been initiated against uh, Pratt & Whitney, which is the uh, basis of this entire uh, sure. financial trouble for uh, the airline, those will be pursued by now by the IRP. Back to you.
got that. Thank you so much, Anisha. And continue to track all those developments. We will come back shortly with uh, to understand uh, more details if you get those as well. Uh, Mr. Call, uh, let me come back to you. Um, any of the other information that you have received as far as the moratorium is concerned? How long is it going to be there for? And what does the moratorium really protect the airline from? Is it from the lenders initiating any action from the as far as the recovery of any of the financial support that they have lent to the airline? Or does it also entail the lessers right there who have been constantly asking the DGCA to take back the possession of the airlines which have been leased to the airline? Yeah, yeah. so I think this moratorium will uh, apply to all, including the lessors. So there will be a little uh, you know, delay. Now, uh, we are also signatory to Cape Town Convention, which they will quote. And we have actually incorporated the Cape Town Convention in our uh, uh, in our rules, in our uh, uh, legal uh, DGCA has done that. And therefore, there may be some conflict with that because, but I'm not very clear on the legal side uh, mm -hmm. of it. Uh, this convention uh, gives lessors a much greater uh, chance to take away their aircraft, which, was, which did not happen. Uh, since we had not incorporated this earlier uh, in one of the cases uh, of, I think it was Kingfisher a case mm -hmm. where uh, the aircraft could not be taken away. Mm -hmm. And after that, we went. So let us see how the whole thing evolves. But it's interesting that for the first time, uh, the airline, one airline in India, went to NCLT on their own to protect their skin and get... Uh, we find that the Pratt & Whitney has not issued any particular statement excepting one statement saying that it's they don't pay on time and so on. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the employer that's kind of running them down rather than you know, apologizing for not able, not being able to supply the engines or their parts. So right. that is my first reaction. But let's see. I mean, I think it's a good step which has happened. They've got the moratorium. Yeah. And uh, they have got a resolution professional. Uh, so let's hope he's able to resolve. Uh, so I issue. wanted to understand, Mr. Call, what really happens next for Go First? I mean, right now we do know uh, as a status that the DGCA has put a ban on further sale of tickets by Go First. After the NCLT order now, what really happens? Will they lift the ban on the sale of the tickets? Will the rest of the uh, aircraft, uh, which is already operational, um, the CEO has mentioned that 27 aircraft is still operational and uh, only the rest of the air, um, aircrafts were grounded because of the uh, failed engines and the failed supply of engines by Pratt & Whitney. But will they get to fly again or will this uh, stand still until and unless we get to see um, some other management taking over because as part of this order nclt has said that the existing management also uh, you know stands cancelled yeah so it's a very difficult uh, question to answer just now because uh, uh, while uh, they have said that the present management stands cancelled uh, the resolution professional if he's able to resolve anything by the way, he can also give back uh, the professional management to the existing okay. group of people. Okay. So, there is, I mean, it, I think it's an open and shut case just now. It's something which uh, we have to wait uh, because appointment of a, pro, of, a, of, a, of a resolution, resu, what is it, resu, uh, resolution professional uh, is, is good and bad. I mean, it's been done immediately. A uh, name has been appointed. He has been, you know, some money has been all allocated for that purpose. So, a whole lot of things can happen just now. Sure. Uh, at sure. one end, DGCA was moving to delist the aircraft so that lessers could take it away. Yeah. Now, I don't know what will happen to that. Does that get stopped with the moratorium? Is this moratorium applicable to DGCA? Uh, I mm. think it is. Yeah. But, uh, okay. Uh, but, I mean, DGCA also, as I said, there is another thing to which India has uh, signed, it's called the Cape Town Convention, which mm -hmm. gives lessors a much greater freedom to take away aircraft, which did okay. not happen. And then they went to court. Uh, the lessors went to court earlier, and mm. uh, the government of India then, in its wisdom, decided to incorporate the Cape Town Convention's main 
you will issue, which has to be done because if you sign a convention, you have to incorporate it in your national laws also. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So that That's a very important point that you make, yeah. Mr. Call. Yeah. That you know we will have to find out whether this moratorium really applies to the DGCA as well. If the lessors again approach the DGCA and the kind of uh, uh, powers that you believe currently exist with the lessors, even if they have an option to go back to the courts and take the aircrafts away, what really happens now is the big question. Um, I will come back to you, Mr. Call. Meanwhile, my uh, colleague Karishma Sudani also joins in. Uh, she got the first reaction from uh, Kaushik Kona, the CEO of Go First. Uh, Karishma, take it away. What was the first reaction from Mr. Kona that you heard after the order? Sakshi, of course, uh, evidently he's happy about the fact that a moratorium has been given because that is what uh, the Go First uh, management uh, uh, wanted. Uh, now, he also shares with us that everything lies in the hands of IRP and uh, um, the plan of action includes uh, discussions on, of course, refunds and uh, resumption of their flights. Just recently, they've announced that until 19th, uh, the flights will stand uh, suspended. But uh, a good question to ask is that uh, what happens after that? How soon are they looking to resume their flights? Yes, absolutely. That is the biggest uh, question right now. And as you just pointed out, Karishma, that uh, the next thing will be what IRB really recites as to what will be the next proceedings. What Mr. Call also pointed out, as far as the moratorium is concerned, that is the big question. We do not know whether the moratorium also applies to the DGCA and whether there are extra powers that the lessers have and can they take away uh, the aircrafts which they have been asking the DGCA for. Of course, we understand that for a period of time, if you can also give us any clarity on how long the moratorium stands for Karishma? Sakshi, I actually do agree uh, with Mr. Call. That is a very big question. This is to ask is on the convention that he had also mentioned. Now, as per international convention, this uh, um, uh, decision by NCLT clearly goes against All right, I think we have lost the connection with Karishma. We will again touch base with her to understand what really happens now next. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Cole, if you could give us a historic understanding of what really happens when uh, after this kind of an order takes place and uh, now the ball is in IRB's court, what will be the first steps that will be done? What will happen immediately now? See, it's very difficult to give you an answer to that. But uh, having appointed a resolution professional, Hmm. Uh, I think uh, the job is that he has to take urgent action to rectify the situation. I don't know how he's going to do it. Uh, in fact, um, uh, Go Air has already filed an arbitration case in Singapore. Correct. Now, uh, against uh, Pratt & Whitney. So what is happening to that arbitration case? Not very clear. Will the professional... Uh, Resolution professional also then, in a way, take part in the arbitration proceedings hmm. for Go Air. Hmm. I mean, is he is he kind of representing the uh, Go Air management while uh, uh, while the NCLT has you know put a moratorium on it? So, what is the role of professional uh, resolution resolution uh, resolution professional uh, is also an issue. Because one is not very familiar with all these things in the aviation sector. It's not been, hasn't really happened earlier. Mm. And uh, then the other is the pressure from the uh, lessors of the air, uh, of the aircrafts. Uh, and they will use Cape Town Convention uh, for this purpose. Mm. And the Cape Town Convention gives them a much greater say in withdrawing the aircrafts. Since these people are not paying for the... Uh, the license fee of the aircraft. So, right. so the lessors are aggrieved. And who is going to pay? Nobody, they don't have the money to pay just now. Absolutely. So, you pointed out, right, they do not have the money right now. And that's the question that we want to find out, that what about the cash flow? Uh, but, you know, an important question that I wanted to also raise, that constantly Go First has maintained that it is perhaps not about the money. The money was being constantly infused by the Wadias itself. In fact, just before the company really approached the NCLT, uh, just about 10, 15 days back also, we had seen the Wadias infusing more money. But what they have done is completely blame Pratt and Whitney 
for their failed supply of engines and on time, which constantly led to the decline of their fleet from 30% in 2020 to about 50% in 2023. And that is what has got them stuck. So is it really about the money that is rests with the Vadias right now, the existing management right now? Or is it actually about getting uh, you know, a supplier to function to get the supply chains going smoothly so that they can again resume the flights? You see, Wadia is a big group. Up to a point, they can fund it. But also, they have their limitations and also they have their own boards of the their companies who may or may not agree to this. So the issue is that, you know, the, 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 company, the, the Go Air has to start flying again. And, uh, it, uh, you know, it may have a few aircraft, but that will not be enough to, you know, uh, and they don't want to sack anybody. Uh, when CLT has said you have to keep all the uh, yes, employees. Yes. So I don't know how it's going to be resolved uh, unless Pratt & Whitney comes forward or mm. gives money as mm. a fine mm. uh, to you know solve this issue. So these are very, very uh, difficult and serious issues uh, which are now going to play. And it will be very difficult to make a guess just now of what is going to happen because it's getting entangled in, uh, you know, one NCLT, DGCA, Cape Town sure. Convention, you know, everything is getting entangled and who's going to get, get what, and then, the, of course, the arbitration in Singapore. Yes. And, you know, in the meanwhile, Mr. Call, in India's largest conglomerate, the Tata Group, which now own Vistara and Air India as well, and the country's largest airline, Indigo, have already started some kind of discussions to acquire Airbus SE planes from Go Airlines. So they are looking to, uh, you know, grab uh, any kind yeah. of opportunity that exists right now. Yeah, what will save, that. yeah, what will save Go first to going down the Jet Airways or the King, King, Kingfisher Airlines way? Well, what they've done is this is the only way they've done it. They've got moratorium. They managed to get a moratorium on, uh, you know, on, on the lessors, basically. And uh, so if something gets resolved within the next, I don't know what the period of moratorium, but the resolution professional has to work over time to get this thing resolved. Uh, it's going to be a very difficult thing. Uh, and uh, they have to get that Pratt & Whitney uh, guys to, you know, I mean, the, the arbitration must be completed and hopefully... Uh, Pratt & Whitney has to pay up because uh, financially also the uh, airline is broke, the aircraft are not running, so there's nothing left for the airline. Sure. Uh, I mean, how much can Wadia uh, from their other companies fund, uh, fund an airline which is not likely to take off otherwise? So, so there is an issue. And let me tell you that it's about 18 years old airline. It's a very steady airline. It was making profit, it was not expanding very fast. It was quite good after, you know, the COVID period has, you know, right. brought it into some sort of a problem, which all airlines were. And right. then it, you know, this Pratt & Whitney thing came up. The Pratt & Whitney problem is there with the other airlines like Indigo sure. also, I think. Sure. But Indigo, sure. the, the numbers are much less, you know, with mm. their total as compared to their total fleet. Mm. Here, the total fleet and the numbers are, you know, adverse to go air. So they are having this serious problem. And I think this is the only way if NCLT can do something. Uh, sure. DTCA, I think, is also another person who could have been more helpful, but then he's constrained by uh, the Cape Town Convention also. Yes. So, yes. and last time they tried to help, uh, there are all sorts of rules in India. Even uh, the customs have a rule that if, this, if they owe something to the customs, then nothing can be taken away, which is right. kind of absurd. Because, or, or even Airport Authority was trying to hold up the aircraft in the previous case, saying that they owe money to Airport, uh, airport Authority, so they will not return the aircraft to the lessors. Now, that is what uh, Cape Town has said. Well, this is nonsense. You know, I mean, if the old company owes money to the airport or to somebody else, you can't hold back uh, the lessor's planes who are not getting paid either. Absolutely. So, so, Absolutely. Yeah. So, so it's, a, it's a jumble of uh, legal issues uh, which are now going to come into play. But this uh, resolution professional has a very lead role to play in this. Yes. And if you can manage to resolve them, well, that will be great. Absolutely. Well, on that note, thank you so much, Mr. Call, for being with us and sharing all your expert takes and insights about how does one really understand what will happen next for Go First. Of course, there is the big interim relief that they have got from the NCLT, where they've got a moratorium, a big protection from the lessers and the lenders so far. Uh, but the big question still remains because of the other convention, the other powers and the uh, you know, several uh, legal angles that one can really explore here. Can the airline really hold on to all the aircrafts or 
can the lesser still take it away? How will the DGCA really weigh on uh, this whole issue on the lesser's plea as well to take back possession of their aircrafts? Uh, what can the authorities really do? And all eyes are right now on the IRP, the resolution professional, as to how do they go about resolving this going forward from here. Of course, uh, the question about the employees, uh, the 7,000 employees of uh, direct uh, of Go First and 10,000 indirect employees really hangs in balance as we speak. The question about will the airline fly again after May 19 is another question that we will continue to find uh, answers to and uh, to track the developments on Go First and the way it is going to take shape. Do stay tuned with us on to Business Today TV and also continue to engage with us on our other social media platforms to catch every minute update that you can get on social media. Many thanks for tuning in for now. Hello and welcome, you're watching Business Today TV, I'm Sakshi Batra. Well, on this special edition, we're going to be focusing on the company that has made the D-Street debut, Mankind Pharma has made a rocking debut on day one on D-Street uh, with a listing of over 